Plastic waste is a huge problem across the world, but can the unending pile of discarded polymer products that are polluting our lands and oceans be feasibly converted into fuel? Can money be earned from this process? These are the questions we will be exploring in today's video. The properties of plastic that make it so valuable that is, being waterproof and corrosion free is also what makes it so troublesome to get rid of. Because of its durability, plastic waste accumulated in landfills and oceans tends to stay there for centuries. The microscopic pieces sometimes it breaks down into have found their way into our food chain, thus causing not only a global environmental crisis but also posing a threat of an imminent health disaster. If we continue our current trade of only recycling 9% of the plastic waste, our oceans will contain more plastic than fish by the year 2050. Out of the 300 million tons of plastic waste each year, only 9% is recycled. The low rate of recycling is because of the perceived high cost. With a more efficient way of recycling plastic, this process can be made into a lucrative opportunity. There are three different methods of recycling that are used at a large scale. Mechanical recycling is the most widely used, it involves mechanically grinding or compounding plastic waste for reuse in similar products. However, this process will result in poorer plastic quality and thus these recycled products are not widely used by the industries. The second method is incineration. It can convert plastic waste into heat and electricity, but the process may result in the emission of toxic pollutants. The third option is chemical recycling. In this method, plastics are chemically broken down into different compounds, fuel being one of them. This method is considered to be the most promising plastic waste recycling process with the least adverse effects. One of the challenges of using chemical recycling technology is that it requires extremely high temperatures of over 300 degrees, which can make the process expensive and inefficient. One type of chemical recycling method involves heating plastic at high temperature in a closed vessel depriving it of oxygen. The plastic turns into liquid and then vaporizes. It then condenses to form diesel and other products. It must be mentioned that the energy that goes into heat for pyrolysis is higher than what is recovered from the diesel produced. Now, there is another method that is still in its infancy. It's called biological recycling, where enzymes are created that consume plastic as food. Biological recycling is an ongoing research that can change the future landscape, but hasn't left the lab yet. We will do a separate video on this topic. At present, most of the research is happening in the area of chemical recycling and researchers are trying to increase the process efficiency by improving the reaction rates through the use of catalysts and lowering the temperature of reaction. Recently, it was discovered that using a combination of ruthenium metal and carbon as catalyst, scientists can convert 90% of plastic waste into fuel in just one hour at a lower temperature of 220 degrees centigrade. The reactor for pyrolysis is a simple closed pressure vessel in which heat can be added while not allowing air to come in. This allows the recyclable plastic to be heated at high temperatures in the absence of oxygen, thus depriving it of burning. The plastic melts and evaporates. It is then passed through a condenser which allows it to be cooled and collected as liquid. There can be multiple condenser stages at the first stage condenser, you will be able to tap out diesel, which will be heavier. At the second stage, you will be able to tap out gasoline. Gases like methane are also produced, which can be used to run the process of heating of the reactor. A general guideline is that the higher the temperature of a reactor, the smaller the chain of the resulting products. Liquid oil or diesel is the primary product of plastic waste pyrolysis with up to 90% weight whereas gases, wax, char, and hydrochloric acid are the byproducts. Interestingly, plastic pyrolysis reactors are available from many companies. You can purchase them from Alibaba. These come in a variety of sizes. 
You can even purchase them from Alibaba. These come in a variety of sizes with some that can handle a metric ton of plastics or tires at a time, while others are so small that they can handle just 10 kilograms of plastic waste in one go. It doesn't take rocket science to make pyrolysis reactors and students and enthusiasts have created their own reactors at home using simple pressure cookers and oil drums. Concave dish mirrors or Fresnel lenses can also be used for concentrating solar energy to heat the reactor instead of using fuel to heat it. This will get the plant going and subsequently the gas produced from the reactor can be used to then carry on the reaction. By using this method, one can make the operating cost of the reactor zero. You can even see a very inspiring video where an islander uses washed up plastic to create the fuel for his diesel generators. This helps him run large grinding machines to shred coconut. In many places around the world where access to plastic waste is high, people are earning money by running these plants. Depending upon the build quality of the reactor, high quality diesel can be obtained. And depending upon the type of plastic that is recycled, toxic fumes can emerge and therefore sufficient ventilation should be present wherever the plant is installed. Now let's talk about a more exciting development in this field. In January 2023, news came out that researchers have created a purely solar powered reactor which converts carbon dioxide and plastics into different products that are useful in a range of industries. This process does not involve pyrolysis through heat at all. It's an entirely different process called photoelectrochemical conversion in which sunlight is directly used to break down the CO2 and the plastics. Different catalysts are used. In the tests conducted so far, carbon dioxide was converted into syngas which is a key building block for sustainable liquid fuels and plastic bottles were converted into glycolic acid which is widely used in the cosmetic industry. The system can be easily tuned to produce different products by changing the type of catalyst used in the reactor. Interestingly, this process can also use carbon dioxide to create syngas which has a variety of industrial uses. Further details of the process reveal that a light absorber called perovskite is used which is embedded with a chemical catalyst. When sunlight hits perovskite, it excites electrons which then react with the catalyst to turn carbon dioxide into compounds like ethylene or ethanol. The same process can be applied to PET plastic bottles turning them into propylene or butanol. It has to be said that while plastic pyrolysis or photoelectrochemical conversion might one day be able to clear up the great Pacific garbage patch, the best way forward is to limit single-use plastics to where they are absolutely needed. So I hope you would have learned something from this video. If you did, then please give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.